We have a lawyer as our guest. What? Why are you looking at him? This is me. What? Our guest is a lawyer, right? Carry on. Yeah, I'm, that, that's the... Oh, he's, he's, he's also a Nigerian actor. You're not a lawyer. I'm model. Not a lawyer. He's not opinion. a lawyer. Not technically, no. Technically. Tec I didn't, I, you I didn't go to law school. I didn't go to law school. I studied law. <laughs> Undergrad. Okay. We have a law student among <laughs> us. <laughs> Better. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for having uh, me. The name again is... Um... Nashe Jemide. Good. See? You did a good job. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't see that coming. See so what coming. That's but drama coming. Lots of things. Thank you for being here, though, Thank by you the way. For having me. You're not surprised. What? Did you say you're not surprised? I'm not surprised. Yeah. No, I didn't say I'm not surprised. Well, you just said it now. So. <laughs> God, look at those feet. So, By the way, our guest is all of six foot five. Yeah. And um, feet to go with the height. So when you see him, don't say, I didn't know you are this tall. He is. Just so you know. So, how you been? I've been good. I've been good. I have a film that came out this week. Oh. You know, so. Oh, what's it called? When Love Strikes. When love strikes. When love, st oh, yeah. when love strikes, all kinds of oh, things can happen. It is, it's, it's at, at the cinema. cinema. Yeah. Okay. So it's a football film that was made by the same people who made Far From Home. Oh. Yeah. Nice. And um, anyway, I'm not, so where where can we watch it? In any cinema, anywhere, any cinema in Nigeria. Okay. Any cinema in Nigeria. When love strikes, we'll when look love out for strikes. it. Featuring you, me, Osasi Godaro, Zubi Michael, Shine Rossman, Chooks Joseph. Before then, what have you been doing? Hiding? Be before what? Before this movie. The one that just came out? Yes. No. What, what have you been doing? Where have you been? What, between the last project and this one? Yes. I've and what was the last project? The, the last project was Far From Home. That was how many Far decades ago? That was end of 2022 that came out. Okay. Yeah, so between then and now, I've been working on the other ones. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, because... Tell us, how, how do you choose uh, acting, or was it acting that chose you? Act oh, this is the movie? This is the trailer to the movie? Yes, yes, yes. There okay. Is. Awesome. Tell us about it. I mean, it's about a young footballer who is trying to pursue his dream of making it to Europe. Um, and he has family struggles to overcome. His mom isn't supportive. He's just lost his dad. Um, so he's navigating all of that, being a young man, Relationships meets a girl. So it's it's a feel-good film. Um, I think it has something for everyone. Mm. Something for young people, something for older people. I'll, I'll stick with the young people part, please. You stick with the young yeah. people I'll part. I'll stick with the young people part because there's a lot of disillusionment out there, Nashi. You know that. There's a lot of what? Dis disillusionment. Delusionment. Dis disillusionment. Dis disillusionment. Yes. Yeah, okay, yes. They well, feel young. that Nigeria has let them down. Yeah. Yes. And yes. Nigeria happened to them. Yes. Right? Yes. Like Nigeria is not even happening to Nigeria. Yes. So, and someone said if a white man or if, if the white, if the colonialists brought a ship to a port in Nigeria now, mm -hmm. that we would all, a slave ship, mm -hmm. and a lot of people would just walk onto the ship voluntarily mm -hmm. and just take Forget me anywhere. Money. Just Forget take me anywhere. So if they knew it was a slave ship? Yeah. Yes, even if they knew it was a slave ship. I think if they knew they were going to be slaves on the other side, they might stay now. Says who? And what do you think that? What are they what, doing? What now? do you think many of them are doing now? I mean, you know, I mean, slaving what? away. Slaving away, but like modern slavery compared to like well, slavery. Slavery. <laughs> slavery. <laughs> I mean, the, so, what? what how does this movie address <laughs> disillusionment of young people? How does it address disillusionment of young people? Is it going to give them any hope? Is it yeah. going to give them hope? I mean, yes. In a sense, the, the movie is all about chasing your dreams. It's about not allowing the tides of life, you know, affect you. And I think my character, that's really what he had to learn throughout the film, is that he's a young boy who wants to do this thing that's really big, right? But he keeps letting his emotions get in the way, right? So it, it's a story about becoming firm enough to carry the weight of your dream, in a sense. So I think, yeah, I think if you watch it, it'll give and you a And does he achieve his dreams I mean, at I the end of the day? I've got to go to the cinema, find out. 
Okay. Well, why am I not surprised? All right. <laughs> anyway. All right. Did, mo did movie making, did acting find you or did you find acting? Acting found me, but it was also always with me in a sense. Um, I'm, I come from a family of performers in a natural sense. Um, we don't have many professional performers, but everyone has talent, you know? So growing up, I wrote stories, I wrote plays, I acted in school plays, but as a profession, it wasn't something that I thought I would do, right? Obviously, I studied law. I thought I was going to go down a corporate path, probably work in banking or something like that. Um, and after graduating, I was going through a little bit of disillusionment, a little bit of a lost phase, you know, not really knowing what I wanted to do. So I decided to explore the creativity that I always knew I had, but I never thought would be a profession. And I was lucky enough that it worked. You know, it led me down a path where I could say, okay, like this has been relatively successful to the point where I can choose to focus on it actually and try and make a career out of it, you know. Why did you choose to study law when you had this art thing going on, you know? I mean, you just assume, well, I assume that I know a lot of young Nigerians in my generation assume that you're just not allowed to do these things. You know, <laughs> we just, just like, you just don't think you're allowed to be an actor. Well, you look young enough to be, to be in that generation where um, you chose what you wanted to be because some no, no, eight am, mates I am, are I'm, dancers. I'm just there. And you, you know can't, I mean? you couldn't have gone to your mother and said, or your father and said, I want to be a dancer. And they'll look at you like, you're right. What have you been sniffing? Yeah. I mean, no, if I, if I told my parents I wanted to be an actor when I was a kid, they would have been the same reaction. I was told, I was told firmly that this was not the path. Mm. You know what I mean? It was not on. Yeah. It was just, no, don't do that. <laughs> We're not doing that. We're going, you're going to university. We are not doing that. Yeah. a hobby. It was quick. It, it's not, it wasn't even a discussion. It was like, you're going to university. And then that was going to be, and also because I, was, right, I excelled academically. So in my parents' mind, it was like, okay, why would you, when, you know, you're getting good grades, like it would make sense. And then of course, my dad is a lawyer. Both my parents studied law. My granddad is a lawyer as well. Oh, okay. So when it came time to make the choice, um, I didn't know what I wanted to do because I hadn't been allowed to really choose in a sense, you know what I mean? I hadn't been allowed because I felt like, okay, all these other things are just off the table. I'm picking from a list of things that I'm not necessarily passionate about. So I couldn't pick. So I ended up picking the thing that I felt made the most sense, quote unquote. They always tell you being a lawyer, like you have a lot of options, you know, you can work in different fields, you can work in different, uh -huh. so it was like, okay. I also wanted to do something that would be relatively challenging. And then I thought to myself, it's in the family. Right, so stick with it. Yeah, I got to pick by next month. University <laughs> 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 applications have to go out soon. <laughs> so, okay, we'll just do it like that. I don't regret yes. it. Though. I'm very happy that I studied law. Mm. Your and father. How, how, do you, how do you see that helping your your <laughs> career? I'm um, studying law. entertainment. Yes. Um, um, entertainment is a contract business. Right, everything revolves mm. around. There you go. Around so easy. Just developing. put it. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. So there's, there's a lot of things that I don't need help with. You know, I understand the terms. I can read a contract. I can, I can identify the issues. You know, so even when I'm talking to the lawyers or consulting with them, obviously they take the lead. But I, I can't be one over not, two. You're not totally blank. Yeah, exactly. You understand exactly. what Which they're is talking very helpful. about. Because a lot of the time in the business, what you, ha what you have is a lot of creatives who don't understand the business side, who can't read contracts, and they get taken advantage of as a result. Yeah. You know, so it's always helpful to know how to read contracts. Mm. And you've you <clears throat> found that fulfilling? Reading contracts? No, no, no. Uh, being in the entertainment business. Oh, yeah, of course. As opposed to practicing law. As opposed to practicing law, yeah. I could have found fulfillment practicing law, honestly. You could have? I could have found fulfillment practicing law, yeah. Yeah, it's... it's I just enjoy this more. Mm. If we're talking about fulfillment, yeah, I could have found meaning in the law. I could have, I could have done things there that I could have looked back on and be like, that was a great thing. That was a good legacy. You know, I feel like I would have been good at it. But ultimately, I made this choice because I felt like I would prefer to wake up every day and do this instead of the other thing. At the end of the day, what did your parents feel? Because you've come from a line of lawyers mm -hmm. and... 
even though you studied the law, you didn't go ahead to practice it. Mm -hmm. How do they feel about you being in this... This transition. This uh, braided hair mm -hmm. business and mm -hmm. all these uh, chocks issues. and yep, uh, yep, yep. torn Honestly, shorts and I, all, instead I, of being in your if I, very prim and proper, you know what? I can do both. <laughs> you know, I clean up, I clean up quite nicely. If, if, if required, I would have come dressed differently. I wasn't really sure what the theme of the show was today. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're an entertainer, you so know, this is fine. Yeah. Um, my parents are relatively understanding, you know, and I think also I had to do a lot of, I proved to them that it made sense. You know, there was skepticism at the beginning. My dad challenged me a lot because my dad, as a lawyer, his, his instinct is to, you know, poke holes to identify where the issues are, the things that you're missing, the things that you're not seeing, right? That's the way he thinks, right? So if I say to him, this is what I want to do, his reaction is, okay, but have you thought about it like this? But what if this doesn't work? But what if that doesn't work? Which is the way he advises his clients, right? So that was helpful because, again, it forced me to really you make sense details. of it, you know, instead of just running into it because it's what I felt. Um, so there was that. They were skeptical, but ultimately... When I got Far From Home, and it had to be a show at the scale of Far From Home, I think if it was anything else, um, they wouldn't have been accepting of it. It had to be something that felt big enough or felt important enough that it's like, okay, I get we can't really stop him from doing this. This could change his life. So I remember when I came, I actually went to law school for four days. Um, and the reason I didn't go to law school actually wasn't because I didn't want to go. It was because my hair. They told me I had to cut my hair. And I'd already started shooting the show. Ah. Right. So I went to the, but then we had an extended break. So I thought to myself, okay, during this break, I'll go to Bari, I'll do bar two, sorry, bar one, come back to Lagos and somehow try and finesse bar one and the rest of shooting. Sorry, bar two and the rest of shooting. So I was going to do it. Got there, I paid for my accommodation. I got to the last. Um, stage of student um, registration, which is student services, and those are the people who make sure that everybody's uniform is right, and they make sure that you, like, your attendance is correct. And the lady looked at me up and down. I had my afro up. She looked at me up and down, and she was like, this is not going to work. Right? So I elevated it, managed to get myself a meeting um, with the DJ of the school, and he said to me, listen, go and do what you are doing and come back. <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, I was like, I walked out of his office, I looked at this guy, I was like, God, I've tried. <laughs> I, like, I've, actually, I've actually tried. I followed it to the end, and that's why I left with peace in my heart, because I was like, I, I actually tried. I didn't want to come here, my parents wanted me to, and I felt like I was doing right by them by just seeing it through. I pushed it to the absolute end. My, I had my peak milk was in my suitcase. I was unpacking already. You know what I mean? So... So you happily told them that you followed it through, but uh, yeah, this, this and then is what, yeah, this with is, a clean this is the conscience that I wanted to make. And my dad told me one of the most profound things that he's ever said to me, which was, "This thing that you're doing is once in a lifetime, and law school will always be there." Right. So that kind of gave me the feeling of okay, let me go ahead. I mean, if that isn't approval, then what is? Yeah. Well, we could go on and on though, because. <clears throat> I'm still interested in asking the question on how you became a model, an international model at that, um, the kind of food you eat, kind of water you drink, ETC, ETC, but I've just been told in my ears, we're going to kick you out of the studio right now. Really? Well done. Yes. Yes. <laughs> kick you out of the studio. Well, not, not what that. is your mother's name, by the way? Winnie Hin. Winnie Hin. Yes, Winnie Hin. Is that a Nigerian name? I believe so. Okay. See? How many? Anyway, I'll come back to you. Thank you so much, Nash. Thank you so much for having me here uh, this morning. Truly appreciate your time. I hope we'll be able to have you some other time pretty soon. Maybe we can have this, even more time the next time. Yes, we will certainly will because this, this time is too short. This time is too short. But thank you so much for coming. Thank you Truly for having me. I appreciate me. your time this morning. And Nasha Jemide closes Sunrise for today. Thank you for spending your Saturday morning with us. We hope that you will join us again next Saturday for another edition. I am Alero Idu, wishing you a happy weekend. And Barakat El Salah, Monday is a holiday, by the way. Mm. Have a restful day. She will be here next Saturday, so will I. I'm Ayo Makine. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. <laughs>